Hello everybody, I'm Levels here. Today I wanted to talk about the first level of Dishonored and its functions as a tutorial level and how it teaches and trains the player. Uh, Cold Ridge Prison is one of the greater tutorial levels in recent video games that is surprisingly dense when you distill each element out of the level as a whole. Spoiler warnings and whatnot apply here. So we start out in a prison cell. There's absolutely nothing you can interact with in here, aside from some bread on a nearby tray. After eating the bread, you get an objective marker to read the note hidden underneath the bread. Uh, even though it's incredibly subtle, this shows that sometimes objectives are determined by the player taking some sort of action within the level. Notice how you're unable to actually pick up the key until you first read the note. After reading the note, which basically just tells you your level's objectives, you pick up the key and unlock the nearby door. Uh, your next objective appears as a weapon on a nearby table. True to Dishonored's core design pillar, picking up the sword on the table is a choice that the player is free to make. You can completely ignore it if you wish. How come so many people are coming to the execution tomorrow? It's on account of Corvo. Uh, nearby, several soldiers are talking, and as you approach the guard in the doorway, this is the first time you get a full-screen, loss-of-character control tutorial explaining lethal and non-lethal takedowns. Generally, heavy-handed tutorial elements like this are presented when the player has that sole element to focus on, and in this example, the single enemy that's framed perfectly right in the middle of this open doorway. As most things in Dishonored, you're either free to kill this guy, you can knock him out, uh, you can even jump over the wall and ignore him completely if you wish to do that. The uh, second full screen tutorial placard element tutorial thingy can present itself here if you move near these pillars on the left side. If you're going for a stealth playthrough, uh, it teaches you how to lean. After progressing past our first trio of enemies, we reach this first room right here. And this is our first example of visual language. We, this is used in many, if not all, games. Mirror's Edge made all of their traversable elements red. Tomb Raider made all of their climbable ledges painted white. Last of Us used a lot of yellow on ledges, fences, landmarks, and all that other stuff. Uh, Dishonored uses a lot of red. Lots and lots of red. In this room, ledges are painted red. There's also the objective marker saying climb here to reinforce all of that. After you're done climbing the ledges, this next guard is really, really interesting. Yeah, but I had to crack skulls, lazy bastards. So this guard is talking to one of the other guards down there that if you leave them alive, he's talking to them. And if they're dead, he says like, hello, is anyone there? And if they're all dead, then he goes and paths down there uh, to the to the downstairs area. If you leave them alive, he stays. He stays here indefinitely, presenting his backside to you and you get a prompt to pickpocket him. Um, your goal is over there, and it's really great that if you come over here and you try to interact with this locked door, the objective marker shifts to the key, which is on his belt. This changes depending on if you kill him beforehand and you don't loot him and he's on the ground, if you hide his body. If he's walking downstairs, uh, the, the objective marker stays with him, and that is really, really fantastic. Not a lot goes on in the interrogation room. There's no enemies. There's a couple of lower um, items to pick up. There's a couple of notes. But your goal is the explosives to ultimately bust out of prison. So after we get the explosives and we head back, there is a guard well framed in the middle of this uh, doorway here, pointing to the yard. Uh, he opens this previously locked door and lets us into the yard. Ackworth. So this area is a, a slight ramp up in difficulty since you're dealing with a pair of guards and they actively patrol inside this well-lit area. There's nothing to hide behind, there's no objects to hide behind. Um, the guards stick to the lit areas and it's, it's generally kind of intuitively not the place that you want to be if you're trying to be sneaky. Um, all of the line of sight breaking objects are awkward, are on the outer edge 
of the of the room. Uh, no objective lies like within this actual area. You don't need to do anything with the guards, so you're free to do whatever you want with them. You just have to progress through the space. Corvo's execution is tomorrow, right? Yeah, but everything has to be set up today. This control room is another ramp up in difficulty. We have an objective to reach the controls to the door to exit into the hallway. Uh, we have more patrolling guards, we have more cover objects. I, I really like this room because even at this point the game reinforces that you're free to complete objectives however we want. We can kill everyone in this room, go turn on the door controls and open that door. Or, if we make note of the red, red is important, red lights, red pipes, you can still get around this objective in a non-tutorialized way. So after we blow up our door here, this is our first uh, inter interaction with water. Uh, we're told to jump from here, but if we ignore that and we progress down here a little bit, we're still forced to eventually jump into water at some point. And at this point, this teaches you that water itself is safe. And since we're initially submerged, we're um, obscured from the guards. And also, water is a navigatable 3D volume that we can swim around on. Some games you can only swim on the surface. So the first room in the sewers has a lot of elements going on here. First we have some red lights, red pipes, a couple of health items. And a note, all drawing us towards these boxes that lead you up above. We also have this locked door and some rats in here that try to approach us. The creepy kind of music is kind of instilling a little bit of fear in them. Creepy crawly kind of feelings. The uh, guards mention some booby traps in the sewers as well, which is kind of a nice bit of foreshadowing. After we climb up here, we have the guards finally enter this room and they get eaten by rats. Rats are... rats are bad times. Rats are really bad times. So this is Rats 2.0, that's what I call it anyway. Um, so the unless you sprint past this dead body on the ground here, you have to approach these rats somehow. If you get close to them while they're eating, you can kind of get closer to them than if they were not eating a body. And these rats don't move from this place after they're done eating the corpse. Normally they kind of wander around a bit, but this teaches us that, you know, we have to deal with the rats somehow. We can't get near them. Um, if we jump in the water, this teaches us that rats can't swim and water is safe from rats. Our next objective is framed right in this water again, right in the middle of this tunnel, so we know that we're going the right way. This turn wheel is fantastic. This room is so small, but it's such a great thing. Uh, everything in here is red. Red gate, red light, red post, even the wheel itself is rimmed in red. If you try to use it, it says a corpse is blocking the wheel. So we have to pick up the corpse and move it so that we're free to use the wheel. This was all available. This wasn't, you know, you could do this previously in the level, but this is the first time it's actually kind of required knowledge on the player's part. This is a 100% safe room to teach the player all these elements, as opposed to there's guards around, you know, they might be alive, they might be dead, but hey, we're going to teach you how to carry a corpse. This next room is starting to layer the complexity of things going on here. Uh, we have a couple of bodies falling from a pipe in the ceiling. Uh, rats are already eating a corpse. Um, 
we should notice this red ledge here, which is the rats won't be able to get up here. Um, if you let the rats finish eating that corpse, they'll kind of mill about, but they won't ever be able to get up here. We're on a we're in a safe spot right here. The uh, crank wheel is pretty well lit. We're we're able to see that the gate's not red, but we just dealt with the crank wheel, so we should know that like we need to interact with that to progress. There's nowhere else to go here. Um, there are a couple ways to get through here, like you can stand on the crank wheel and, and turn the wheel to open the gate and then just kind of get through there without the rats. Um, intuitively, I think most players will chuck the bodies down here so that the rats remain distracted so that we're free to, you know, go over here unhindered and open the gate. And I've had a long career in QA, and I really appreciate that if you hang out in here while the rats eat all the corpses, eventually another body will fall. And that keeps on happening indefinitely until the body stays on the platform and the rats don't eat it. Keep it moving. Can't get caught. Attention. Normally, tutorializing that you can climb a chain is, is really simply done and in this case I it's it's almost not worth mentioning but I really like it in this setup there's so much verticality in this one room uh, the pipes turn around this like overhanging ledge they go up this metal truss on the wall goes up the waterfall everything is kind of like naturally drawing you up to look up and um, just to reinforce that there's a chain it's really simple, but layered all together, it, it feels so natural. I really, really love this next bit. It's probably my favorite thing in, in this, this whole part. Since we've escaped the sewers, we've had no enemies to really deal with. Rats are pretty simple in the AI department, and after several minutes in here, we're starting to feel pretty comfortable. And this is where the tripwire comes in. This first area, we have no cues on, you know, like, there's nothing red in this area. We don't really know where to go. We don't really have anything. Our objective marker is still relatively kind of far away. And if we just run up these stairs, there's a tripwire here. It's, it's sort of camouflaged in with the horizontal slats. And it's worth noticing that it's worth noting that there's no tutorial prompts warning the player. It's just here to shock and surprise you. If you happen to notice the tripwire, you can still safely deal with it. If you get close to it and you use the F key on it from here, you're safe from the blast radius of the trap over here. The lighting, if you see this lighting over here, it, it looks kind of like a new object. We haven't really dealt with that before. You can go around, you can disable the trap this way. Of course, you can just jump down into this little gully. And, uh, and and avoid it completely. You can even throw bottles at it to trigger the trap that way. And if you do run into it, notice how much health damage I take. It's almost negligible. It's like, oh, I stubbed my toe, I got a paper cut. It's, it's no damage at all. It's really just here to announce itself like, hey, surprise, tripwires exist in this game. And it's not really meant to punish the player. If we go over here, this one is way more obvious. It's well lit. You got a skull back there. And the thing is pointing right at the player, so if you take damage from this one, it's quite a bit more significant. It's about 30% of your health. The next tripwire that we reach here gives us a prompt to slide, to press C, uh, to slide while sprinting. Of course you can do that, but being dishonored, you can also do everything that you've done before. You can break these wooden slats to go around it. We have that You haven't dealt with those before, but... That's a thing in Dishonored. You can break small wooden objects. Uh, you can still avoid it completely. You can trigger it. You can go back and get a bottle. You can trigger it um, all in the same ways that the tripwire, the first instance of the tripwire presented itself, you're able to do here. The optional safe immediately after the tripwire teaches you that, hey, there's optional goodies that are kind of locked up and hidden, and you have to find a key to open them up. Um, this note tells us to look to the whiskey for the answer. Got it. It's pretty heavy handed. Um, but you can see a five there, and 
we have three numbers, so you kind of have to go here and unveil the rest of the combination. And once you open it, it contains some goodies, uh, normally some coins and like a healing or mana item. The health item is really appreciated after we've dealt with a couple of traps. Maybe some people are low on health and stuff. Um, again, red light, red rimmed lighting around this archway thing. Red sign all leading us out of this spot. The narrative in this bit... You know who we're hunting here? Don't try to take them out alone. But what if no one from the squad is around? Then try to make a lot of noise when you die. Knock something over if you can. Bastard. So the narrative here involves a couple of guards saying to make noise if you see an enemy. This is pretty important because it teaches the player that even if nobody is within eyesight, sound travels, you know, around corners and stuff. It can alert guards that are nearby. Um, it's possible that players have already dealt with this if you get into open combat and guards that can't see you can hear you and, and come to provide assistance. Uh, there's a couple of nearby bottles. Slip into the water. And they'll investigate noise and they'll, you know, they're, they're doing what they said they would do basically. Like, make noise, we'll come investigate. Try to make noise when you die. I can't see the bottom. Where the first prison yard was the first instance where you can kind of spread out and move along a horizontal axis. This area is the first area that you can spread out on a vertical axis a bit. The center of the room is really not conductive to stealth gameplay. It's really well lit. There's no objects to hide behind. It's really hard to stealth through this area and deal with all the enemies in here. You can go above the enemies by going on the layer vertically. And if you want to, you can swim through all the water to get past them that way. It's kind of a sandwich where all the guards are in the middle and your bread is your your safe areas. And again, to reinforce the whole red thing, we got some red paint decals on the wall, we got a red pipe here, and another red sign kind of pulling us all towards the exit of this area. Upon exiting, there's a little bit of narrative. And eventually we meet Samuel and it's the end of the level. Coldridge Prison is really dishonored on training wheels. Like, aside from two areas, it's mostly linear, doling out the experiences in a measured pace, trying to teach you along the way. The most important lesson in this level, I believe, is that there's multiple ways to approach, assess, and overcome, like, anything that the game is going to throw at you. The training wheels really sort of come off in the second level as you land in the distillery district. It's relatively wide open, heavily explorable space, with only one objective marker in the very beginning to guide you at the start, and you kind of uncover side objectives and things to do along the way. And uh, that's all I really have to say about it. It's one of my favorite tutorial levels in any game for probably the past 10 years. It's really, really dense if you take like each thing on a, as a line item throughout this whole level. And it's a level that you can get through in like six or seven minutes if you know what you're doing. Thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you've learned anything, that would be awesome. Uh, please let me know if you enjoyed this, or if you didn't, even. Uh, I don't normally talk about AAA games and design stuff involved with them, but if this is something that people would want to see more of, I, w I would like hearing that, I guess. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.